Okay. All right. So this, welcome to this, um, we call this a podcast maybe, I don't know. We are going to have a conversation and we're going to allow people to partake in this conversation. All right. Okay. Well, partake by watching, not by like... By watching. Chatting with us. Right. Okay. Um, So we're going to start off, you're going to say something interesting, I'm going to say something interesting. Okay. Well, I have to say something interesting first. Would you like to? No, I would like you to say something interesting first. That's your job. That's what you get paid for. I get paid to be silly. I can say something silly. Okay. Say something silly. Knock, knock. Who's there? Can't think of anything. You want to hear my favorite knock knock joke? Yes. This is uh, when I daven might have in a shul, and I daven for the almond. I get up and I say knock knock. Who's there? Ve. Ve who? Ve who rach mi chaperov the liaschus. Uh huh. So this week is Pesach Sheni. Yeah. And I was thinking about a vort. I actually heard this vort from uh, Pinya Korf at a Fabrengen. I even if I, I should, if I looked up his name, I would say so he needs a refuel shleima right now. Um, anyways, but it's the the, the vort is because I looked it up since then, since I heard it at the Fabrengen. It's from the Friedrich Rebbe. It's a sicha sefer sichas tovshin aleph. And uh, the Fidik Rebbe says that there are three things that are called Shani. The Nefesh Shanis, the Cheder Shani, and Pesach Shani. So what are those three things? Nefesh Shanis means the second soul. In Pedic Base, chapter 2 of Tanya, it talks about the second soul. The first chapter talks about the first soul. The first soul is the animal soul, or what he calls over there the natural soul. So Nefesh Shanis is Neshama. So <laughs> what we often call the neshama or the nefesh alakis, the godly soul, that's the second soul, right? And then there's all types of uh, explanations why we call the godly soul the second soul and the, the animal soul the first soul. Um, maybe just to give a basic background to that. When, when you're born, you're born with the, the, the survival impulse, that uh, you know the primal instinct, which is basically the animal soul, self-preservation. So, for instance, if I wake up at three in the morning and I'm hungry, so not only do I not scream and wake up everyone in the whole house, I actually will try to be as quiet as possible so that I don't wake up people going to eat three in the morning. But a baby doesn't care. Babies are all about self-preservation. They don't care about anyone else. They have no guilt. They don't get ashamed. They don't feel socially awkward. So that's the first impulse. Then later on, you get the second soul, which is an altruistic impulse, which we call the godly soul. And apparently until you're 12 as a girl or 13 as a boy, you don't have enough of the presence of that altruistic impulse to even be accountable according to uh, Torah law. So that's the second soul. The godly soul. Okay. So, so far, so good. Okay. Second room, the Cheder Sheni, also called the Chabad I also saw in a Sicha, the Friedrich Rebbe said that the Rebbeim of Chabad would not even daven in a shul that did not have one. The Cheder Sheni is May- a sec- I, yeah. but Maybe they were just davening in the Cheder Sheni of that shul, that, but it didn't exist, so it was outside. That, yeah, well, if they davened outside of a shul. You know, there was a shul in Paris where they'd have been davened, I think, in the hallway. What, do you know what the circumstances were? I believe that the setup of the Aran, I believe, I'd have to look into it. But uh, when the Rebbe went back to Paris to get his mother, Rebbe Tzinchana, there was a shul, I believe, that had been davened in the hallway. I, I believe it had something to do with the placement of the Aran. But Meisha Feinstein write, writes about not putting an Aran at the front of a shul because it's like a reform thing, which is modeled on uh, churches. 
You have to okay. put it in the middle. Anyways. Well, you're not supposed to put it where? Front. You're not supposed to put, not the auto, the Bima. Sorry. Bima, right. <clears throat> you're not supposed to put the Bima in the front. You know, the auto obviously goes in the front. Um, Do you know, I, I looked up one time, there's a halacha that, that a shul has to have a some sort of like uh, foyer. You can't have the door go straight into the shul. Right, right. That that's that's halacha, right? Just that that's a halacha. Yeah. yeah. This tangent is just we just off on a tangent, but just because we we're talking Isn't about the construction of shuls and and there, their similarities to churches, which is going to come up in a second. But it's a milsabatayma. There's a reason for why it has to have a foyer. There, yes, there are reasons. I forget the ones that were not interesting to me. So that's I looked it up. Was interesting. I, so I looked it up for a video that I never made. There was a, a series of Ichikuzi videos I did about about the show. You did Ichikuzi. Yes. Hi, I'm David Taub. I'm the puppet guy. You were, they, you know I did Ichikuzi. You wrote some of them. How could you forget that? They canceled you, or you canceled them? <laughs> yeah, I was the number one Hasidic puppet show in the world. I think okay, I'm just canceled. asking. I didn't. I know. think it canceled. Okay. Um, <laughs> By the so, way, who knows what that's a reference to? Write in, and you will get a free video of Ichik Kaduzi saying "Happy Birthday to your child." All right, thanks a lot. All right. Um, so, what was it? Yeah, so I was making an Ichik Kaduzi series called "The Show," and I only made a few of them, and then each one was about like different aspects of the show. And uh, one of them was going to be, which I never made it, was going to be about well, this halacha. So I was trying to find interesting takes on it. And one interesting pirush that I found was from the Bach, where he said that... I'm impressed reason, you remember the mucker. Yeah. Uh, you know, b- back in the very, very, very early days of, of Itchy I don't know if you remember, I used to put uh, I do remember that. at the bottom of the video. I do the remember end. that. Right. I stopped doing that. And I'm, I wish I had at least done it in the scripts, because every script I wrote has a mucker. Like every, every, yeah, whatever the, the little token speech at the end is, I have a mucker for it, And but like a lot of them I don't remember where. I wish yeah. I had written that down for myself. Right. Um, a mucker, but, for those who don't uh, know the Hebrew, is source. A mucker or a makor is a source. So I, uh, yeah, so the Bach said uh, that... The Bach the reason, would be the... the you do know what it stands for? Because I don't. The bias chadosh. All right. And yeah. uh, points for you. Because, no, <laughs> it's easy to remember because <laughs> it's easy. Anyone knows. Anyone could do it. Anyone Thanks. could do it. Um, you volunteered me to make puppet shows for people, and you called me ignorant. <laughs> the, uh, the tour has the commentary of the base Yosef, who's also the Mechaber. When the Mechaber wrote his own oh. Yosef Karo, who was the Talmud of the Arizal, he wrote his own Shulchan Aruch, he's called the Mechaber. Uh, but when he wrote a commentary on the tour, it's called the base Yosef. So there's the base Yosef and there's the Bayez Chodesh, the new house. Okay. All right, then now that is what you should remember now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so... Not to court- be confused Lahavdil with... An actual the, new house. The composer, Bach... Oh. Yeah, they're different people. Like Godel, Escher, and Bach. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what Bach's interpretation of this halacha is, but according to the Bayez Chadash, the interpretation is that... Uh, all right, so that the, uh, the reason why a shul has to have some sort of... There has to be two sets of doors, by, you know, the, the, by minimum, some sort of room before you go into the shul. The doors can't so open you're straight. entering into. from the street... You can't enter from the street straight into Davin. Sure. There has into to be the, an ante room. Has to be some sort of antechamber. Right. I said chamber, it sounds fancier. Um, and the reason for it is because apparently that's how certain like cathedrals are or something like that. I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not an expert in in like church architecture, so right. I can't comment on it, but that's what it says there. Right. Um, well, I know one thing about church architecture that some of them yeah, some of them have paintings on the ceilings. There's one, yeah, famous one. I've it's heard a chapel. Of. 
it's only a chapel. I thought maybe it was like the, in the like in the lobby in a hospital. Or something. It's at an airport. But at an airport, there's yeah. a chapel in the Sistine Airport. There's a in the Sistine Airport, and there's a guy, a teenage mutant ninja turtle, who drew pictures yeah. on the ceiling. Based on based on all the knowledge that I have, that sounds absolutely correct. Um, That's so, the extent of my knowledge of yes. cathedral decor. All right, so. It doesn't end there, though. It doesn't say that it's just because of the similarity. It says, well, so but why, does, why is that architecture that way? Taka. Why is a shul different? Right. And it's, so it's not just because, oh, we don't want to be like them. A shul serves a different you ever function. Read and it has to be built differently. You ever read I, The Guide to the Perplexed? Have I ever read Meir and the No, I've yeah. ne I never have because it doesn't exist. I've read Meir and the That's what I said, Meir and the Oh, did you? I thought I could be smart and correct you. Um, but yes, with the hey how you do So well, yeah, there's there. one particular guy who was very confused. But but it's nevuchim, it's plural. So there two were guys. a group of two were two guys who were very confused. Yeah. Um, but over there it says a lot of the reasons for mitzvahs are to not be like the idol worshippers. Right. So it, yeah, there's a lot of places where. Where that is enough, but this one interestingly went a step further and said that the function of a, of the, that type of church is different than the function of a shul. I mean, obviously a hot deal, but uh, what other what is that different difference? The difference is he says again, this is all coming from there. I'm not an expert in Christian theology. But this um, is what the Bach says about yes. churches. Yes. Okay. Uh, that. Um, the function of a of the the clergy person in a church is to be the intermediary to take your prayers and, and, and get them send them to God for you. Mm -hmm. But in a shul, there's no such role. There's no such person. So um, your prayer, you're you're sending your prayers. It's, this is between you and God. There's nobody nobody who is closer to God than you. Right. Who is in charge of being the bridge between you and no God. hierarchy. We're all close to God. Yes, um, and therefore, the in a church in a in a church or a cathedral, the actual like prayer room, that whole big hall, is like an antechamber. That it, before the prayers go up to God's throne, right. or whatever. Right. But in a shul. The sh your prayer, your dominating is right there. Hashem is, the Shechina is resting in there and all that stuff. So you have to have a separate waiting room. Wow. You know, that reminds me of a joke. Okay. One of the, probably, I, I, I estimate there's probably about 200 rabbi jokes. You know, corny <laughs> jokes that rabbis tell. Um, I think there's about 200 of them. Have you told them all? more. I've told, well, no, not all of them, but I, I tell a lot of them. Some of them I can't bring myself to tell. Uh, but one, one of them is the famous joke. I don't remember, I, I don't actually, I don't tell this joke, so I'm not sure if I'll tell it well with the right setup. I mean, the punchline is from here, it's a local call. Right. No, that okay. one, right? Do we even have to tell it? I mean, I guess maybe it'll get a better laugh or you can tell it. If you, want. you know what? I don't even think it's funny anymore because. <laughs> There's no such thing as local calls because <laughs> once upon a time there were long distance calls, mm. and you would call somebody in you know in California and be like, okay, you know we gotta we gotta talk, we gotta wrap it up, okay. When okay. you tell the joke, you have to explain that first. You have to explain first. There used to be long distance calls, and then okay, but then the the president, I think it's like President Johnson. That's mm. how that's how current this joke is. So LBJ goes to. Uh, the Vatican and the Pope says, would you like, we have a phone here. Would you like to call God? And then he's like, yeah, sure. And then he calls and it's like, okay, but let's hang up. It's getting expensive. It's a long distance. Right. And then I think that's how they tell. Then he goes to Israel and he goes to Ben Gurion, whoever was the prime minister at that time. And he's like, uh, you want me to wrap it up? He's like, no, don't worry from here. It's a local call or something. something. <laughs> Local call. <laughs> By the way, you remind me right now, for those who are real diehard Echikaduzi fans, of the episode, which I think I did co-write with you. Where, yes. Where I think Jano 
have to go to the comedy club. I don't know why that they were there, but yes, John, John had to go to the comedy club for some reason. Was that what it was? Yeah, and he asked Itcha to help him. Or yeah. did Itcha have to go to the comedy club and he schlepped Jono? I guess. I don't know. And then so they did a, a, the 3,000-year-old man. Right. And G-Fish is sitting in the audience. <laughs> sitting in the audience. Yeah. Cracking up. <laughs> and all these uh, like, like uh, outdated jokes. He's loving it. Right. You're just saying the last word of the punchline and then like... Yeah. By the way, I wonder... And the traffic was mighty. <laughs> mighty! <laughs> I wonder, by the way, if that human impulse is somehow connected to the impulse to say the last word of each aliyah with the Balkaida. I don't know. Just, okay, fine. Right. That'll maybe for a future episode. We could analyze that. So that's the Bach. He says that you have to have an empty chamber before the shul because when you get into the shul, that's the real thing. You're actually connecting to Hashem. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So in, in order to establish that, to make that clear, you have to have another room beforehand. Lest you think the, the shul itself is only an antechamber, yeah. like Lahav the, 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 the church. Okay. That's amazing. That's really, really cool. So we were talking about the Cheder Sheni, that within a shul, there's a side room. Cheder Sheni literally means the second room. And... Um, it was traditionally a place where people would go to daven with the, the benefit of being uh, close enough to the minion so that they could hear, they could answer amen and all the other things that you can answer when you have a minion and to hear the, the Torah reading if it was a Torah reading day. But they would be off on their own and they could pray at their own pace. That was the idea, the cheder Um Anyways, I had a thought today, by the way, about the Cheder Sheni, which I don't have a resolution for, but the, the thought was, is the Cheder Sheni to prevent those who daven at their own pace from disturbing the minion, or to prevent the minion from disturbing those who pray at their own pace? Well, I mean, I, I have, I'm biased. I'm biased as well, because I have the same whatever you want to call it. I would say it's to prevent the minion from bothering you. Yeah. It's very yeah, I'm biased, But there are a lot of people who, who, who are not, that's not the acre in a show. A lot of people will, will ask me, like have asked me, why do you even come to show? Why do you even come to show? You don't daven with a man. I never saw you daven I've with a I've never seen you daven with a minion. But why do you come here? That's right. I'm sitting there with a, a, a safer there in the entire davening. What do you even want to use to sit and learn at home? Right. So I actually had this thought because of quarantine and social distancing, that there are two kinds of people. There's the introverts and the extroverts. And there are people who are very pained. And I have compassion for them. There are people who are pained by, just by the fact that they don't, have interactions with like a hundred people a day. Some people thrive mm -hmm. on that. That energizes them. Yeah. Just to get out and you see people, you see human beings and you, okay. <clears throat> now I understand human beings are, are social creatures. So if you were in, let's say solitary confinement, God forbid, that would cause anybody to be, you know, distressed. That would cause psychological damage. But, you know, as long as you have a couple of people around, there's a little bit of noise, a refrigerator humming, you know, some type of noise, you know, birds tweeting outside. That's enough. That's enough. I mean, it's more than enough. Some people, they really need the social interaction. They're like they're all types of stimuli. So I was thinking, I was actually thinking about this, that maybe this is a theory, just a theory, that it's not even a pet theory. I have some pet theories. So it's just a, a thought that you had. You're not particularly I only had it, to it this Shabbos, and I, I might move on from you it. You haven't grown to love it yet. I have not grown to be attached to it whatsoever. But that it's possible that those ha who have a proclivity for davening at length may also have a low threshold for dealing with all types of social stimuli. Mm. Meaning the very same people who would like to pray more 
actually are overwhelmed and and distressed by having too much interaction around them. Interesting. Well, then I would, I then I would say if that if that is the case, that if you find an extrovert and somebody who really likes being around people and doing things in an organized way with other people, right. who still davens at his own pace, right in the Cheder Shani or right. you know, in the corner of the, of the shul, right. that would be like a special guy. Very special guy, right, because he's going against his nature. If my theory is true, <clears throat> that right. those, those things are... That's an interesting <clears throat> idea. But I, I, I based it, I mean, I didn't base it on that. I based it on my experience, but I sort of strengthened my theory to myself. I mean, this is not something, yeah, I told you, I, I, it's not a pet theory. It's not something I would be confident going and talking to anybody about or being recorded on a video that will be posted publicly anywhere. Um, but there's a, there's a video of dollars where a, a, a father, I think it's a father and a mother, they come to their Rebbe and they have their son with, with them who's autistic and they tell the Rebbe he has autism and they try to explain to the Rebbe what autism is. And, and, and like the Rebbe knows exactly what it is. And the, uh, Rebbe says something. I, I should have looked it up. I should have watched it. So uh, Jem put it out recently. I mean, it recently, but in the past few years, whatever it was. And the Rebbe mentions, yes, they have difficulties with people, but they're closer to Hashem. I don't know if the Rebbe said closer to Hashem, but the, they have an easier time connecting with Hashem. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, of course, you know, that's people say all types of things that are, you know, feel good things, you know, to make people feel better. But first of all, obviously that Rebbe never said anything to make any, anybody feel better. If the Rebbe said it was, you know, complete truth, but um, the way that Rebbe said it, it's actually, I mean, in addition to the fact, I'm sure, obviously it made the family feel better, but also the Rebbe was explaining mm. it's a different kind of a person. Look, some people have a talent. I mean, evident to elaborate on it but some people are talented at social interaction um others are less talented in that area but that that discrepancy i mean or that that deficiency let's say in one area might be an indication that there's an area where there's a greater talent and you know sort of like i mean i don't i don't want to again you know i'm not I haven't worked this all out, but for instance, like a blind person would have a, a better sense of hearing. I mean, that's, I know that sounds like a stereotype. That's actually, I believe, something that is proven that blind people do have a, a more keen sense of hearing, which shouldn't be surprising, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So it occurred to me, this idea that the same kind of person who might go to a minion for religious reasons, because... You know, you're a Jew, you have to, you have to daven in a minion. But not necessarily be so happy to sit in the thick of all that stimulus and rather want to be in a side room. That might be the exact same personality type who is very comfortable davening for a long time meditatively. Just a thought that I okay. had today while I was davening in my yes. own little room. Right. Without a minion because... Right. Because only because you're forced to, not because, because you're I'm more comfortable to. that way. Only because I'm forced to, not because I'm uncomfortable that way. Correct. Okay. So that, that we were talking about the three things called Shani. And then the third thing called Shani is Pesach Shani. Pesach Shani is the second Passover. The first Passover is the famous Passover that everyone knows. Everyone knows the first Passover because... Six weeks before the first Passover, even the Gentile grocery stores have a whole wall full of Manischewitz. Yeah. But, right. The second Passover is exactly... Sometimes they also have uh, Hanukkah stuff out, too. Why not? It all goes together. Yeah. Right. And it's the Jewish section, basically. Yeah. So the, the, the second... Passover is a month after the first Passover. Those who missed the Korban Pesach, Korban Pesach means the offering, the sacrificial offering that was brought in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem in the times when the Temple stood. Uh, so if they missed the sacrifice for whatever reason, uh, whether because they had ritual impurity or they're too far away to reach, uh, to reach Jerusalem on the day of the sacrifice, so they had a makeup, they had a second chance called Pesach Sheni, the second Passover. Um, 
So the second Passover is an interesting concept. I think actually I originally heard this from you. Tell me if you remember this. So a lot of things I heard from you, and I've asked you later, and you don't remember telling it to me. But okay, I'm glad I told you then so that they survived. <clears throat> right. So I think you told me that Hillel Potter, I think you told me it was Hillel Potter, was once uh, being harassed by someone who was anti Hasidic. Okay. Okay. And the person said, You see them are very funny. You celebrate a Yomtif for Temeim. Do you remember this story? No. I heard it from you. Anyways, you celebrate a Yomtif for Temeim. Okay. Okay, so let's explain what that means. A Yom Tif, a holiday for Temeim. Temeim means impure people. What was he referring to? He was talking about Pesach Sheni. Because in the times when you had a holy temple and you actually had sacrifices, and if you missed the first Passover, it means you missed the first, you missed the sacrifice. So you would Pesach Sheni, the second Passover, would actually be a time you would actually bring a sacrifice. You, you would bring a lamb or a goat to the temple and you would eat it, and it was an actual thing that you would yeah. do. But since the, the destruction of the temple, so Pesach Sheni, what do you do on Pesach Sheni? There's nothing you can do on that day. It's just, it's almost like just like a, an interesting historical factoid. On this day, in temple times, people who missed the first Passover will be able to do, make, bring a make up. I, mean, I make matzah pizza. Okay, you make matzah pizza. What I'm telling you is... That's what guy, I do. Okay, I know. That's but I'm how I observe you. Pesach Sheni. I, what I'm telling you, though, is the guy who was making fun of Helopatacha was telling him, yeah. nobody does anything. It's not a day that you do anything. It's historically ahead of significance. But today, there's no actual practical meaning to it. But you Yuchsidim decided to make that a Yom Tif. Mm. And it, it's ironic because that's a Yom Tif for impure people. Because who would bring a sacrifice on the second Passover, someone who couldn't bring on the first right. Passover, which generally, there are other reasons as well, but one of the main reasons is somebody was impure. Anyways, this guy who was anti-Hasidic, Hilipanachi, we should mention, was a Hasid who lived in the mid-1800s. He was a Hasid of the Alter Rebbe, although he never met the Alter Rebbe, and then of the Mitle Rebbe, and then of the Tzemach Tzedek. And he himself was a great mentor and teacher, a leader in his own right. He was a Rav in, a, in the town of Bibrusk, I believe. He was originally from Padich, hence the name Hello Padich. The story might not even happen to him. I mean, I believe you heard somebody say to Fabrengen and came over and told it to okay. him. So the guy All telling right. it could have told it wrong. You could have told it wrong. I could have remembered it wrong. So I'm hearing it like however many persons, like fifth person from the guy who told it at the Fabrengen, and one of those people is me. That's right. It's like you're a guy who, in the middle of you know what they call you know what Chinese whispers is? Um, it's no. It's it's what <laughs> some people call the broken telephone game. Okay, so are we going to just start listing off all of the the racist uh, <laughs> ways in which the word Chinese is used? To, like a pomegranate is sometimes called a Chinese apple. Yeah, yeah, was. I, I've, I haven't heard somebody say that in the in the past hundred years right. or so. Well, about I believe a hundred years ago, anything exotic was called Chinese. Yes. Right. So you could have anything. You're like Chinese ice cream. Whoa. Is that? Are you just making that up? Or I made that up. Yeah, yeah. Right. I made that up. Right. Right. Or Chinese virus. Not racist at all. It's from China. <laughs> okay. I, we should share that video, by the way. Some Ichigadoozy fan made an amazing video. I, it wasn't me, by the way. And it wasn't you, right? No, it was not me. They took a <laughs> clip of Trump at a press conference saying, it's not racist at all, it's, it's from China. And then they cut it to the Ichigadoozy quest for fish. Yes. Where the villain, not the villain, the villain's henchman, yeah. says he's putting a filter fish on a plane to China, but it's not really China. And he laughs. He says, ha, 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 China. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> China. And then, and then John laughs along with him, but he doesn't get it. Okay. Maybe we'll actually cut that in okay. before we post this video. It's not racist at all. No, not at all. It comes from China. <laughs> China. <laughs> China. I don't get it. So, so where, where were we? You were telling me about, about broken telephone. So, yeah. 
you, a guy who in the middle of a broken telephone game, got up, went to the kitchen, some crackers, and came back and sat back down at another seat where you weren't seating, seated, seated originally, <laughs> and got a second turn <laughs> yes. in the telephone game. Anyways, um, so Hill Apotichuk, maybe, could have been, or some other Jewish person. Um, was once chided for having been involved in celebrating Pesach Shein. And the guy said to him, you know, your chassidim are interesting. You celebrate a Yom Tov for Temeim. Celebrate a holiday that was made for the impure. Mm -hmm. We should get a bit more background, but Parshas Ba'aleischa, um, which is in the book of Bamidbar, in the book of Numbers, there's a there's an event that transpires. We'll come to Moshe Rabbeinu. They come to Moses, and they say famously, "Lama nigara? Why should we be here? Why should we be left out?" Now, there's different explanations in the oral tradition why they were impure. We'll leave that for another time. Um, the point is, they were impure. <clears throat> they could not participate in the first Passover. Moshe Rabbeinu goes to Hashem and he asks him, hey, what about helping these guys out? And Hashem makes a new mitzvah for these guys or because of their reason. Um, and they were able to, to bring the the, club, the, the, the the offering because apparently they were impure on the first Yom Tov. By the time the second Yom Tov came, they were able to go through the, the purification ritual of the red heifer, the puma, and so then they were able to Bring the sacrifice. Anyways, so this guy says, ah, you guys, you see them, you celebrate a yomta for Tameyam for impure people. So the Mahil was responds, not a yomta for Tameyam. Not a holiday for impure people. A holiday for impure people who became pure. And there is no greater holiday than that. Oh, wow, that's really cool. It's beautiful. It's the idea of Teshuvah of returning, being restored to our innate goodness. So those who had been impure became pure. Greater celebration is there than that. You know what? That is really, that's really, really cool. I like that. I totally do not remember that story at all. I do not remember tell, hearing it or telling it. And I'm glad you told it to me because I know it now and it's cool. Yeah, I, you know what I've been thinking a lot about? Uh, uh, I've been thinking about a lot recently is uh, I recently got into a fender bender and um so i had to look at the insurance card of my my uh you know, admit nothing you know yes that's what i want to Don't talk even about sorry the first thing i was told when i started driving first thing that all of the, the concerned grown-ups in my life wanted to tell me is you ever get in an accident do not even say i'm sorry you don't say i'm sorry our instinct is i'm sorry even if it's not our fault do not but that's admit, an admission of fault do not Im admit guilt and and on the back of the insurance card it, it has a list of a bunch of different the procedure where do you think it, it comes from? was it just bold. neurotic parents making that up it yeah. says do not admit fault that's right and I have been thinking about it because I think it's a like I've ha I've I've had you other basic, you basically think it's like stealing the afikayman at the seder. Yes, <laughs> yes, I think. Am it, I it's getting bad. it? Yes, that it's is teaching what it, midas Right, and and it happens all the time. Anytime I'm in any type of like business dealing with somebody, I'm, whatever I'm, I'm some sort of business relationship. Somebody hired me to make something for them things aren't going perfectly and I'm writing an email and just, just to move things along, whatever, just, just really sorry. With, I have, dealing I, with the issue. I always, I write, I'm right. like, I'm very right. sorry. And then I delete it. And I say, no, 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 you can't admit guilt. Say it Don't like, you know, fault. Don't no, admit fault. be upset that, that the, that the situation is bad, but don't right. apologize. And I hate it. It's wrong. Like how can you, as a society, if that is, I mean, it's not just for, for when you get in a car accident. Right. I think uh, it, it as a society, that is a value we have. That People will hold it against you. It's a weakness. You'll be, you'll, you will be made to pay dearly for your admission of. Yeah, like how could you do that? And and, right. and and we see all the time important people getting accused of something, and of course they, they deny it. And it is why they because they know if you admit fault, because you admit it, you'll get in trouble. You do you'll get in trouble? Right. 
Terrible. If you admit any type of fault, if you it all say, I made mistakes in the past. I do not right. remember oh, this I, one, but terrible. I am sorry that I did that, that I hurt somebody. Right. Right. Not allowed to say that. You cannot say I'm sorry I hurt somebody because uh, you hurt somebody and you're gonna and legally also that it makes a difference and you 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 can actually get punished. So no, right. don't it. But like how that that seems bad to me. If we have our even our like justice system is set up that if I publicly acknowledge the possibility that I could be flawed, then right. in our justice again. system that could end up being held against me. And uh, like it, it makes us all not willing to admit that that we could have messed up uh, because because more and more it's like m more and more frequently we are seeing people who have a very big role in the world and a large mouthpiece and an opportunity to be leaders and our leaders getting accused of things and i would love like um and we're we're just reinforcing to each other all back and forth over and over right. again this don't no admission of guilt isn't that a, a, a Rashi in Chumash? It says, Nasi Asher Chata, I believe is the, the word it is, a, a leader of the people who sins. Hmm. And Rashi's quest, well, what's the wording? Asher. Asher means that. But uh, syntactically, I mean, it's not the most logical wording that should be used in the verse. So Rashi says, Asher is, is related to the word Ashre. Ashra means fortunate. So Rashi, fortunate is, is, is the people whose leader admits fault. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. Fidika Rebbe said that there are three things called second. The second soul, which is the godly soul. Chapter 2 of Tanya. And throughout, but that's where it's introduced. The second room which is the room of davening at length, undisturbed by the minion. And the second tzach, which is the transformation, the celebration of self-transformation. So he says, that's, you put them all together. And what? Take your second soul, go to the second room, and don't come out until you have a second Passover. Oh, wow. Go daven with your soul, Speak and experience the self-transformation. Oh, wow. Cool. Very cool. Anyways, that was the idea that I wanted to share with you. I wasn't sure how long that would take to share that, so I don't know how these things are supposed to be. But What things? things, the, these videos that we're putting out now. Zoom conversations between two brothers about has, Hasidic thought. By the way, I came up with a... That genre, that, that well-known genre? I, yeah, yes. Came up with a, a working title for the series. How many of you like it? Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers? Blood Brothers. Okay. Why? I mean, we're just regular brothers. Isn't that what blood brothers are? I mean, I guess we're related by blood. So then, what's a blood brother? Isn't that when two people like prick their hands and then smush them together? I wouldn't know about such a thing. Where's that from? I don't know. It just exists in my mind. I never saw anybody do it. You never saw anyone do it? I don't think You're so. Right, actually, it is a thing. You could research it later. I also don't know how I know this. Um, I've also never seen anyone do it. No, I've never, I never seen heard it. anybody in real life tell me they did it. If I saw two people do that, I I would be very concerned that they were about to do something very bad. <laughs> that they were making a pact. Yes, I don't I like. My, like. I would be pretty level, positive. Like right, how? What activity would require <laughs> that level of commitment right. and that display of? Like you want to go hang gliding? Yeah, I want to go hang gliding. Okay, let's make well, let's become blood brothers on it. Okay, no, they're not. That's not what they're doing it for. They're not hang gliding. No, no, something far more nefarious than that. It may involve hang gliding, but <laughs> <clears throat> at the end, it's the getaway. Nobody knows how they got away. 
How did they uh, escape? The Grand Canyon was right there. They ran off. The police were sure they had them. And they disappeared. Was that like D.B. Cooper? (laughs) Yeah, like D.B. Cooper. Is that what it is? Cooper, is that right? Yeah, D.B. Cooper. uh, He robbed an airplane. He hijacked a plane. An airplane got ransom money. They landed. They brought him a suitcase full of ransom money. Right. Then they fuck off again. How and they were going to get him on the other side. They are going to get him on the other side and humped. And they didn't see he had a parachute or anything. And they never found him. Okay. So uh, this has been really a pleasure. It has I've been. Really enjoyed Thank this. you so much for, for telling me that, that short Nakoda that took a while for us to parse through. Unpack. We unpacked. I, we unpacked it before I even heard it. Before I even heard the punchline. You take and so go in the second room. Don't come out until the second pass over. What? Yeah, I know. I heard the punchline at punchline. the end. But yeah, that was the punchline. By the way, before we wrap up, I just want to add one thing. This precisely is an illustration of why. And this is my own vort, my own piscum. I made this. I coined a phrase that there are no vertolach in Chabad. Have I told for? Yes. Vort of mine? If you notice, I was, I was careful to, to say Nakoda just now, because I right. know that's, that is a have, pet theory of yours. That is a pet theory of mine. What's a vort? A vort is something that you can hear it, digest it, enjoy it immediately. That's why crowds love vert because it's something, it's short, it's pithy, it's easy to, it's usually, you know, it's like uh, feel good and it just, boom, you got it. And there's really no work involved after that. In Chabad, Chochma Binadas, you give a Nakoda. Nakoda is like Chochma operates. In fact, Chochma often is called a Nakoda. And then you unpack it, like the relationship between Tereshe B'chsav and Tereshe B'alpeh, the Torah and the, and the oral Torah. You take one word, like Rabbi Akiva would take calligraphy on top of the letters, and then to tile tilim shal halacha, into mounds and mounds of practical ramifications. So that's a relationship between Chochma and Bina, the, the, the Nakuda, the point, then the elaboration um, of the point which is often like into gestation, you know, the unpacking genetic code and turning it into a whole uh, child. Uh, so we have Nakudas. Best example of that, by the way, is Hayyem Yeng. The Sefer Hayyem Yeng was compiled. The, the subtitle is Luach Er Zerua Lechside Chabad. Er Zerua is a Lashon Apostik, is a turn of phrase from, from Tehillim. Er Zerua Lechzadik, entered light, seeds of light. For the righteous, but what's a seed of light? Seed of light means that a seed is a tiny, compact little thing. But if you tend to it and nurture it, <clears throat> it expands not only exponentially, infinitely, potentially infinitely. Is a saying. I thought you were going to say a, a, the seed of light is a laser pointer. No, it's not because a laser pointer is just a laser pointer. Mm. If you, point them at airplanes. Then it will blind the pilots. Maybe that's how D.B. Cooper did it. Get in a lot of trouble. Um, so why do I think I know that the green ones are worse than the red ones? I don't know. Maybe you could look that up again later. I believe I have that piece of information. Anyways, maybe they go farther. Maybe they're more distracting. I don't know. Okay, anyways. So so the, the Friedrich Rebbe called the Rebbe's allergy of sayings uh, a, a calendar of implanted light for Chabad Chassidim. So what's my understanding? Again, it's just my, my idea. But Chassid Chabad means who take things and they really run it through the Chachma Bin Adas. You, know, you're not, you don't just take a vort. You expand it. You, you build on it. You elaborate so if you take a Hayyem Yem, a Hayyem Yem, each one paragraph or two, sometimes they're one line or two lines. It's tiny, but it's not, that's all there is. It's, it's a seed. So you can take one Hayyem Yem, you could fabreng 10 hours on one Hayyem Yem. 
But you think that the tagline for Hayam Yam is a Nakuda about Nakudas. Exactly, yeah. That's right. That itself very, is a Nakuda. Very meta. Very meta, because yeah. that concept itself, it's not a subtitle, it's a whole it's a whole thesis in the form of a subtitle, a slug line or a tagline. So yeah, you could you could say it would be a nice 20 second WhatsApp video. You could post it as a status on your WhatsApp seconds or less, you know, Instagram 60 seconds or less. Now they have IGTV, so it could be longer. But everybody like short. You say, you know, the Chassidim used to say, take your second soul, go in the second room, don't come to second pass over. Bam, everyone love it. Forward that. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. That's what I do on my what? TikTok account. TikTok, I've got you know, two the, followers. TikTok's owned by the Chinese government. Is that a fact or is that something that, that you heard in I the pray, one time? I pray that I'm not peeing conspiracy theory stuff that I heard, but I believe it's a known fact. I believe it's a known fact. And we again, we could look that up. We'll intercut that into post-production. Anyways, so what was your point? Oh, you were saying that yes, you could say these things. You could have said Cheder uh, Sheni, Pesach Sheni, and say it as a four. Never say it as a thirty-second. Bam, Boom, done. And uh, right. we would all be very inspired. Right. But but the better way to do it is to unpack say it. weird stuff for an hour. To say. The stuff that needs to be said, even if some of it's weird or seems or, weird. Or, yeah, like the D.B. Cooper story was a very important part of unpacking this particular Nakoda. Well, D.B. Cooper uh, came up because of hang gliding. Which, which came up because we're talking about Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers. Which that actually was just inane. I, that was a joke, by the way, in case you know my sense of humor. I picked a lame title. Okay. I pitched I, you know what? I didn't want to, I didn't want to judge. Uh, we're recording now, you know, late, maybe later. I can what brothers? Really? I picked the most inane and lame <laughs> title I could think of. I did not understand it. That was the joke. That was the joke. By the way, you told me your favorite joke at the beginning of this. You want to know my favorite joke? It's a it's a iteration on an old one everybody knows, but my my kids and I have kind of uh worked a little bit. Knock knock. By the way, if Uhu Rachum is not my favorite joke. You told me it was your favorite joke. I said you my said favorite it, joke to make what I'm davening. I, from the from davening my... But, but from that Dominic. itself was only it was a, part a, of the just part of setup. Because we established that I daven the Chedeshen. <laughs> so the whole thing was a contrivance to be able to tell the knock Oh, uh, okay. So not your favorite joke. No. I thought that you were, you were telling me you start most of your speeches with it. No, I've probably never told it before. Anyways. My favorite joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting fish. Interrupting fish. (laughs) (laughs) You like it? Well, in order to get that joke, a person has to have a fairly uh, solid background in knock, knock jokes. Yeah. The... The actual, that's a parody of a well-known knock-knock joke. Knock-knock, who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow who? And then before they can finish saying interrupting cow who, you you cut them off and you say, because he's interrupting cow and he interrupts people. Um, That's very good. Thank you. Yeah. I can thank my kids for it. and they, they They came up with it. Helped you develop that. Yeah, I don't know who who actually came up with it, but together we ended up with it, and I'm, I'm very proud of it. Mm-hmm. People don't realize to be funny for five seconds can take hours of writing. That's right. It, it really, I have to credit that joke to the room. It was room written. All right, are we done? Yeah. Okay, awesome. This is fun. I'm going to stop recording Fantastic. now. Okay, stop recording.